Hello friends, welcome back. We are getting into an extraordinary, interesting as well as very important playlist. This is nothing but interview questions in electrical and electronic engineering. That too we are going to touch the fundamentals. Remember, fundamentals are most important than anything and we are going to touch it. Well, we will have multiple questions but each session will carry 10 questions and it's going to be really, really, very exciting. Let's go into the questions right away. This will be very helpful for the people who are trying to get a job in core electronics, electrical industry or someone who wants to switch from the existing job to the next one. However, this is fundamental, so good to know. Well, let's get into the first question. Differentiate electrical and electronic engineering fields. It's a very fundamental question. It is very important to know the answer in a very neat way. Electrical engineering is a branch of science or engineering which deals with the flow of current. Please understand, it deals with the flow of current through metals or conductors. But electronics on the other side is a branch of science or engineering which deals with the flow of current through a gas or vacuum or semiconductor. Please remember the first case when it comes to electrical engineering, it is the flow of current through the conductors or metals. Electronics on the other hand, the flow of current through the gas, vacuum or semiconductor. And you need to note on the spelling of vacuum, most of the times we do make a mistake there. Right, what is a semiconductor? Semiconductors are the resistivity in between the conductors and insulators, which means the metals and non-metals. So the examples of the pure semiconductors could be silicon, germanium, or it can be compounds such as gallium arsenide or cadmium selenide. So you need to remember one thing, semiconductors have the resistivity between. The resistivity is the major factor that you need to make a note here and it lies in between the metals and the non-metals conductors and insulators on the other side of it. Define current in a very simple term. Current is nothing but flow of electrons. That's all. Here we have a very simple diagram which can help you in understanding that this energizes, this makes possible the flow of electrons and there is where current comes into picture. Let's understand about AC, DC and all those things a little later but for now just understand current is flow of electrons. Well, state the exact definition of electric current. So what I gave earlier is a colloquial definition, but now it's time that we give a perfect definition. Current is actually the flow of free electrons. The word free has been added here, which adds a lot of meaning to the entire context. Current is actually the flow of free electrons. Well, why electrons always constitute for current? Won't protons provide us the option? Well, this is a very good question. Why electrons always constitute for current? Won't protons provide us that option? I hope you understood the question clearly. Please listen to this answer very clearly. A negatively charged electron, a negatively charged electron has a mass of 9.1094 into 10 to the power of minus 31, minus 31 kg. But on the other side, the positively charged proton, this is proton, the positively charged proton has the mass of 1.6726 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg. So if you compare, if you understand, it is almost 1836 times the mass of an electron. That is, when you divide 1.6726 1 into 10 to the power of minus 26 kg by 9.1094 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. So it is almost 1836 times the mass of an electron. As the mass of an electron is approximately close to 2000 times lesser than the mass of the proton or neutron, electrons can easily be moved. The tendency is more there. The electrons can easily be moved by applying a relatively low energy and thus contributing for current well ahead of the moment of heavier protons. This is a very important technical question. I hope you understood it clearly. Please read it through once more if you want an, and you want more clarity and you can listen to it once more as well if you want a better uh, understanding of it. Well, what is the mass of the new neutron? Is it closer to the mass of protons or electrons? Again, this question is also equally important. A neutron which is electrically neutral, it carries no charge. That's why we call it so, right? So a neutron which is electrically neutral has a mass of 1.6749 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg. Remember this, these numbers are very, very important for you to get deeper, closer, correct understanding. Its mass is very close to that of a proton. So please understand 1.6749 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg is very close to the mass of the proton which is nothing but 1.6726 into 10 to the power of minus 26 kg. So the answer is given. Now the next question is going to be very very interesting as well as important. Why a dry chalk piece or a desk 
notebooks, pencil or pen doesn't show any trace of electricity. The next question will be connected to it but it will be a, a slightly twisted one. So let's understand one after another. Why a dry chalk piece, desk, notebooks, pencil or pen doesn't show any traces of electricity? It's a very good question again. The proton always carries a positive electrical charge. Remember, proton always carries a positive electrical charge. And it is equal in magnitude to the charge of the electron but in the opposite. So, sign is opposite. So, remember it. Proton carries something. It is equal to the electron but opposite in the sign. The protons possess an electrical charge of plus 1 which is equal but opposite to the charge which is minus 1 of an electron. That's what I conveyed. It is plus and minus there. All the atoms tend to have the same number of electrons as protons. Hence, please understand, hence the positive and the negative charges get cancelled out, making the atoms electrically neutral. And hence, they do not show any trace of electricity. So, this is a very important question. I hope I made it clear. Next question is again very good, very easy, and very important too. How a wet chalk piece, pencil, or pen begin to suddenly exhibit traces of electricity? The previous case it was dry, this case it is wet, so there is a difference and how it is showing the difference. When made wet, when made wet, let's say by immersing it with the water, more number of free electrons come in into picture and more number of free electrons are provided by the conductive water. The water is conductive, the conductive water and thus there constitutes the current and thus there begins the movement. So that's all because of the conductivity which is supported by the water and you got to understand it. Well, what's doping? Why is it done? This is a very important interview question. The process of adding impurities to a pure semiconductor is called as doping. It is pure. I'm going to make it a little impure. I'm going to add impurities to it and that's called doping. It is done in, an, in order to generate either a surplus or a deficiency of valence electron since the free electrons or the holes are only responsible for the conduction. Remember, this is done with the purpose and the purpose is very clearly conveyed right in front of you. What is a hole in the semiconductor? A hole is the absence of an electron in a specific place of an atom. Remember, a hole is the absence of an electron in a specific place of an atom. A hole forms as and when, when the electron moves from the valence band into the conduction band. That is, outermost shell of an atom which is a partially or completely filled with electrons. So remember, a hole gets formed as and when the electron moves from the valence band into the conduction band. So there is when you get the holes formed. So we covered 10 questions today. I hope all these 10 questions were very interesting and uh, you liked it as well. So we started with the simplest question where differentiation happened between electrical and electronic engineering and semiconductors and we defined current. We defined current precisely. Uh, why electrons always constitute for current and then we went to the neutron and we took a piece of chalk when it was dry and wet and we also discussed doping and finally we ended it up with what is a hole in the semiconductor. We will see more questions and I hope this is very useful. Uh, thank you very much for following the channel with the content. If you have any questions you can post it in the chat. We will be very happy to answer. Thank you.